Okay, we are back. We are now going to be on the Tree Replacement Lake District CRA, tab, tab 20. And we'll go to that. Any questions? Oh, here we go, I gotta reboot, hold on. Are you dead too, Are you, no power? You need a charger? Good. Um, you have your charger? Your little thingy under your... Mm -hmm. See if you can get that plugged in. There should be a cord attached to it. Any questions for the CRA, tree replacement, or lake districts? I'm going to defer my questions on the CRA to the next time we have a CRA meeting because even though we have this budget, in front of us, all these CRA items have to come back to the commission, correct? So um, you have curb improvements, roundabout engineering plans, bus shelters, and ADA sidewalks. This is just a redo of what we've always had in here. So uh, let's see what we finally get done in this thing. Can, what's the roundabout engineering plans for? I don't know, but that's giving me a headache right now. <laughs> what's the roundabout? Please the, don't tell um, me it's Daltona Boulevard. Please, the, yeah, because we already kicked that out a long time ago. No. Yep, yeah. uh, you are correct, ma'am. It well, was I, part of a study that was gonna be done with TPO, and we pulled the plug when we realized that under the best scenario, we would have to buy three houses, which immediately puts it into the million dollar range. And uh, it's just, I think the last discussion we had with you all with the possibility of altering the um, alignment of part of Normandy from Saxon to Deltona Boulevard because it's extremely wide right away and shifting it a little bit to where we could make Normandy flow straight into Deltona Boulevard and have the remainder of Normandy be a T intersection that would slow the traffic down on Normandy and make for a better traffic flow through the CRA. Yeah, all I know is we said no on that one. Yeah, that, that roundabout needs to go. Yeah. Agreed. So. 250 out. Yeah, I mean that, and, and, and we're gonna have to revisit the CRA one way or the other, that has to be its own entity and any budgetary decisions will have to be made at that point, but I, I Commissioner Sosa, are you good with nixing the roundabout? Yeah, that's what I have a question. Okay, Commissioner McCool? What? Roundabout, bye-bye. Commissioner King, bye-bye to the roundabout. Okay, that's out. All right, anything else? Um, Madam Mayor, I just wanted to tell you, um, since it's related, the tree fund has a total of $959,983. So I don't know if anybody um, had an interest in that number, but um, as you alluded to earlier, uh, we are putting out an RFQ for landscape architects to begin the process of changing the trees at the um, Martin Luther King and Howland so that we would have the signature palm tree, take the cathedral oaks that are out in Highland and move them over to the center as a backdrop to the pergola looking toward the retention pond so that if you're in that grass area, you're not looking at the big hole in the ground. So uh, that will be going out shortly, and we intend to use uh, some of the funds from the tree fund to uh, pay for that project. And have we identified, I'm sorry, have we identified the other areas where we're going to use that? What does it, the, because I know I've asked about it for the last three or four years, how long has, have we left the tree fund untouched? What does this fund represent in, t in number of years that we've been adding to the tree fund? Um, I'm, I don't have that number, but I can find out for you. Okay, have we identified other areas of concern or areas of interest for the tree fund? Um, Mr. McCall, uh, one of the things that I had spoken to the commission about is the idea that um, if we have the opportunity, one of the things I want the landscape architect to help with is if we have an opportunity to save a tree um, whether it be a city project or somebody's private property or something, a significant tree, uh, that we could have a tree base uh, company that can come in and take the tree out root intact and take it to a location uh, that the city designates. 
Uh, one of the things we need to do is start locating locations that we own where you know, it would be appropriate for a, uh, a specimen tree or a soon-to-be specimen tree to be relocated. As, as I believe you have said before, um, you can't create a 50-year-old tree um, in a day. Uh, but with a tree based service, you can move a 50 year old tree. Okay. Okay, any other questions on the tree or anything? Then we'll move to the next tab 21, street lighting districts. Relatively self explanatory, paid for by the street, dis street lighting districts and the residents that choose to um, have the required amount of people participate in that. And this is resident driven, so anybody out there that would like a street lighting district, there is a way to get that. Um, any questions on that commission? No? And we'll move to tab 22, transportation fund and impact fees. So. Commissioner Sosa. Yeah. For, for the debt service, we have 70, 710,000, we have a total of 600,000. And then for uh, line item 720000, there's 856,700 for just the, uh, the principal and the interest. How much do we owe on that debt and what was that debt for? was a road bond, correct? That's right. That was from 2016. It was capital improvement, and part of it was transportation to do road improvements, and a smaller part of it was for the center. For the center? The center and the transportation portion of it. Okay. And how much do we owe on that right now? Okay, just What's a moment. What's the fund balance on it? Does anyone have any other questions while she looks? Are you good, Commissioner Sosa, or do you have another one? Yeah, that, that was it. Okay. okay. Commissioner King, you okay? Okay. Commissioner McCool? <coughs> I'm good. Okay. Commissioner Bradford, you have something or you're good? You're good? Good. Okay, so um, we'll move on. You got it? Okay. Yeah. Um, the transportation portion of it is 24630000 and the center is 6855000 One more time on the center. 6855000 oh. That's the principal. The transportation, what was done for that? 6855000 um, That, I do them finance, I don't build roads. Is Phyllis here or Steve Dan? It was a re <laughs> <laughs> It was a refinance. Steve, what do you know about? I love that answer. Uh, I, I think I can answer some of that question. Go for it, Ron. Uh, we did the uh, intersection improvement at Howell and Catalina. Catalina. We did uh, Tivoli improvements. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not going to steal Ms. Uh, Wallace's thunder about, uh, you know, maintenance of roads, so I'll turn the floor over. Yeah, that's quite all right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, we're maintaining roads as well as part of that. And, I, you know, there's a whole list of other projects that involve uh, Rhode Island Extension, North Normandy, uh, East Normandy, and whatnot. <clears throat> you know, I'm paved shoulders on Alcan Boulevard was one of the pro uh, projects. And, hey, yes. Mr. Sosa, um, <clears throat> the fund, my understanding, and I wasn't here at the time, but my understanding <clears throat> that the fund would create um, an anticipation uh, uh, partly of the uh, the sales tax going through, uh, it also was for the 30, 33 percent match with TPO projects. Um, a lot of the projects on just reeled off with TPO projects, you know, typically in Providence, the Alcan paved shoulders, the, um, the trail down on Providence. 
<laughs> so the city share with 30% uh, and 70% of the money came from the uh, TPO fund. So um, it was basically to create a map so that we could go for other dollars. We still have almost $25 million worth of outstanding debt for those improvements. Yes. Mm. Mm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any more questions? I would like to have a, um, at the convenience of, of staff, a breakdown of what what we use the money for and what would still what's still left in that. Um, Some of that money is also going to go to Rhode Island. Right. It's, we still have a portion left. That'll be the last of it. Yeah. Then it'll all be spent. Okay. Tab number 23. Tab number 23. Deltona Water. Administration. Commissioner McCool. Yes, I wonder when the proper time would be when we talk about the surcharge for out of town. Uh, out of city Deltona water customers, when would that be? That's part of a uh, memorandum of understanding that we're working out with the county right now. <coughs> so it is coming. So you're saying there's a chance? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions on Deltona water administration? I would like to say that in Deltona Water and Public Works, we maintain our air conditioners. <laughs> and I would like to say thank you. <laughs> and, and while we're talking about Deltona Water administration, how close are we to implementing the new system where I can just go online to have my water bill taken off every month and I don't have to print it out and bring it in like the paperwork? Right now, uh, our anticipated go live date is July 20th. Hallelujah. Hmm. And we will be doing community outreach with that as well, correct? Yes. And we're working with public information to, to get the work out, word out. Wonderful. Okay. Any other questions, commissioners, on this one? Quick question. Yes, ma'am, go ahead. Um, we brought up earlier about the rentals and how many people skipping out on their rent. When the person coming in, the next person coming in, <clears throat> are you increasing the amount of deposit for that residential property? I know the county does, because you know the couple of houses I have are actually under county. So um, the next tenant generally gets based their deposit off of the previous ones. And if, you know, they tend to have a much higher if the previous tenant was, you know, paying late or whatever. Do we do that? I'm not aware that we do. Uh, I've never been asked that question before, so okay. I can check into it though. Okay. Just cry. I know the county does for a fact, so they actually jack that um, deposit up because if that tenant has had a lot of late payments or whatever, then or the rental home has a history of it, <clears throat> then unfortunately the next tenant gets to bear the punishment of the previous tenant. Well, I, was, um, I was just informed that we do not okay. uh, charge them higher. Correct. Um, I, what I was going to say, Mr. Bradford, is the way the state laws are, um, <clears throat> if the tenant gets the water bill in their name and they are gone, uh, we cannot do anything with the property owner um, and we can't do anything with the next runner. Um, it is a standalone debt um, and I believe the last number I heard, Julia, was a little bit over six hundred thousand dollars that we have in delinquent, unpaid bills. Now, I'll tell you that number sounds astounding, but it's over a ten-year period. Um, at some point, we probably need to come to the commission and write it off, um, or sell it to a debt collector uh, for 
a marginal amount and let them go after it. Exactly. So, uh, but I have had several uh, times when I was at Deltona Water where a uh, title company would call to find out how much was owed on a uh, water account uh, because it was holding up a closing. And I had to inform that it under state statutes, uh, they cannot do that. Uh, we cannot lien the property for a renter's um, uh, responsibility. Uh, we have drafted a new policy for Deltona Water uh, that we'll be bringing to commission. Um, part of the new policy is that when a renter signs to take on a, a meter for the property, that the property owner has to sign it also. There's a statement where the property owner agrees that the day the renter leaves, the, the property owner is responsible for the bill from that day forward. So for instance, if um, uh, you have somebody that leaves today and you're going out there and you're pressure washing to get ready for the next person, you would be responsible for the bill starting tomorrow uh, so that we don't have that lapsed because we did have a situation where the meter, we didn't, were not told anybody moved out and the meter was still running and it ran up quite a bit of bill even though the, the runner wasn't there. So we're trying to close that loophole. The only other thing we could do, um, it would be a difficult decision, but given how much we've lost in the past, and that's just simply to say that we won't let the uh, uh, the renter open a, an account that it has to be in the name of the owner. Um, and then the owner would have to add in the cost of water into the uh, rent. Uh, but no, we don't want to go there. Uh, that would be the only other way to protect ourselves. So that's, a, that's an update. So the 600000 that's delinquent right now, how much of that is left over from COVID? Where are we at from when COVID, we had all the delinquencies? Where are we at with that? Um, my understanding is um, majority of people have come in compliance in terms of their payments. Uh, we did set up payment plans uh, that gave people, I believe, up to a year to pay back uh, what they you know, didn't pay during COVID. Uh, so you know, we did quite well, um, better than I expected. Let me just say it that way. Uh, so so. So I guess my question is, I mean, obviously we've, we've made it through the COVID, you, you did the payment plans that assisted. So the $600,000 that we're behind right now, the chance of us getting it is slim to none unless you do kick their, hit their credit. So I guess my question is, why not? What, why not just write it off? No, why aren't we hitting the credit? Send it out to a, a collection. You just said we can send it out to a collection. That, I'd rather get pennies on the dollar than zero. Yeah, that, that may be an option. I think it's something I need to talk to the finance department and legal to see what that process is. I know several people that do that type of work. Um, so, you know, it's certainly something we can look at. I mean, I don't think it's fair that the rest of our residents are paying for the delinquency of others. They pay their water bill and they do what they're supposed to. So. You know, if we have 600000 let's get it off the books and let's get what we can. Okay. That's my personal Excuse opinion. me. We, we do have a contract with the debt collector right now, but the return is, as I understand it, is very minimal. And the tax benefit of writing it off is? I haven't looked into that. There's no tax benefit. Oh. We don't do taxes. They don't pay taxes. That's what I'm saying. And the tax benefit of writing it off is what? I mean, we just, so we're not getting money. We don't write it off. Um, turn it over to a tax collection is just going to cost us. So do we keep tracking $600,000? I mean, what's the chance of people paying? Like, how much of that do you get paid a year? Probably the past 10 years, probably nothing from those in the past. Probably zil, zip, yeah. zero, nada. Every, What's that, every, pizza commercial, zero, zero, zero? Every once in a while, we'll have somebody who moved out open up a new account, and we'll be able to collect it then, but it doesn't happen very often. So they're all coded, though. So if if I skipped out of my rent or my water bill five years ago, I moved out of Deltona, and I think, oh, I'm going to move back to Deltona, and I go to open a water account, you're going to hit me with that charge unless they use another family member. Correct. Woohoo. Madam Commissioner, I will also say, and it's something we need to check into, is I understand there's a consortium of utilities who share information with each other. 
So if, for instance, if the Kefalo was to not pay the water bill in Deltona. <laughs> Why's it got to be Ms. Kefalo? And she, and she went to open up an account in Winter Park, and they were part of that group. Winter Park would say, before you can open, you got to pay your debt in Deltona. Let's so. do it. All right. Let's make sure she doesn't open any water bill anywhere else but Deltona. <laughs> Not that McKiffalo would ever not have, have an outstanding water bill. I can assure sick you that. Sick my stomach just thinking about it. Mm -hmm. Digging the hole deeper. Are you good, Commissioner Bradford? <coughs> Commissioner Sosa? Yeah. Going to the uh, the debt again, we've got about six and a half million in principal and interest. <coughs> what is that six and a half million paying for? But what debt did we occur with that? And how much is uh, yeah. how much is that debt that we're paying oh, Julia. on? Julia, oh, Julia, she's got the answer. That. She's got, got this. <laughs> <laughs> okay, those numbers um, are for the Series 21 bond that we just did last year, 2021, and also the two SRF loans that we have. So um, I know it looks like we're paying a lot in interest. But by refinancing the previous bonds we had, 2013 and 2014, we're actually saving about $2 million a year. And what's the total debt on that one right now? Oh, it's, yeah, I don't know that. 98 million. Yeah, it's close it's to about 98, 98 million. million. We've only had it for a year. Close to how much? 98, 98 million. million. And what was, what was the bond for the 2013-2014? 2013 was a refinancing of the original mm -hmm. purchase from 03, and 2014 was for capital projects. And how much were those ones back then when, before we consolidated them and refinanced them? I don't remember off the top of my head. I just have the debt service payments in front of me, but I can get it for you. Okay. Because I was just curious how, how much we, we may have a payment saving each month, but I was wondering what the long-term effect of it was from refinancing it. They, they did go out the term, but not longer. Yeah. And it also went from tax exempt to a taxable bond, which doesn't matter very much for us, but it just helped get a favorable rate then. Okay. And was those bonds, was that for the Eastern plant? The uh, original SRF was for the Eastern plant. Okay. The SRF loan. The FRS was for the Eastern plant. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. And then um, for the 14 million you have in projects for this year, are those carryover projects from last year, the year before, or is these going to be all new projects slated? A variety. Uh, one of them is the continuation of the straw project as uh, the acting city manager likes to call it. The, um, also, we're doing the Eastern Wastewater Treatment Plant Expansion Project, uh, some uh, water wells, new wells outside the Blue Springs Basin that were installed and we're getting ready to um, uh, outfit those wells and, and pipe them to the plant. So we have quite a number of projects underway right now, either in bidding or um, award. Or construction. Okay, so out of that 14 million, not all of it's gonna come out of this budget year. Some of it's already been paid for in the previous budget or allocated in the previous budget? Um, most of it will be this year. Okay. Probably, yeah, not very much of it should carry over till next year. Hmm. Next fiscal year. Right? Next fiscal year. <laughs> all right, thank you. Okay. And we'll, seeing no more, we will move to tab number 24, water plant operations. Any questions on that? Commissioner Bradford? Salaries and wages, 115,000 increase. How much, what staff was that, I'm sorry? What was that? Or Salaries and wages, we had a 115,000 increase. Okay, uh, that mostly has to do with pay increases and, um, and we've got some promotions as well. As our staff becomes more qualified, we have to pay them. <clears throat> Any 
and, and just to say that Deltona water and water and wastewater plant operators were always on the low end of the pay scale and they would stay about a year, get their certifications and then go to go pay, go ahead and leave and go somewhere else. It's a constant turnover. And I'm hoping that we finally raise that to a level that is sustainable. Um, oh. Madam Mayor, one of the things that we did is when we implemented a program where um, you know, as you attain different levels of uh, certification, whether it's water and wastewater, sea or whatever, uh, we were able to provide the additional fund that made the salaries competitive and uh, we've done a much better job of retaining our staff than we did in the past. But you know, I, I give credit to uh, staff for you know, coming up with the matrix to uh, you know, pay people according to what level of certification they have. We have, um, you know, I, I think I've told the mayor this before and some of you all, but um, Clem Wickham and Jeff Elder are the uh, two of the top trainers in the state of Florida. Uh, when it, Jeff, uh, Glenn for plant operation, Jeff for uh, utility lines. Um, they are, you know, they train our staff. Um, and so we have very talented people on our staff and uh, we're very fortunate to have them. Agree. There was okay. also a, one new position for a flusher that was added to the, to the, to our roles. Great. Any other questions? We'll move on to wastewater plant operations, tab 25. Any other, any questions on this commission? Well, I'm still, I'm sorry, I'm still looking at the other okay. one. I'm trying to make sure I did this right, writing my notes. So under, I'm sorry, under the Deltona water, 524301, this is Power Utility Services for Water Plants. Did I write that right? It's up $500,000? Generally, the utilities are based on the current usage, and then we've added in, as I understand it, Julia, we've added in a um, anticipated increase. $500,000? Did I write that right? No, it's Which the same as last year. Okay. 525. I might have been looking at Which the wrong Which page are you then. on, Commissioner? Hmm? Yeah. Which page? Um, page three. That's what I was trying to find in last year's. I think I might have copied over the wrong one. Power utility service. This is the same. Oh, because she's in fact. Any other these, questions? These amounts are too high. Okay, let's go to the next one. I'm sorry. Okay, so we are on, that was wastewater plant operations 20, um, 25. So customer services and billing tab 26. Number 524102, mailing of bills, delinquent notices, et cetera. You see that going down at all with our, with an implementation of the new system? We certainly hope so. At least for the condos. <coughs> mm -hmm. I think that's gonna be a savings at some point. So is that gonna stay that high? Yeah, that was a note too. No, it, it should drop. As people get on to the e-billing, it, it should drop, but we don't have any way to predict you know, Especially when you can consolidate the condo bills because Edgewater and Lakeshore, they each get one individual bill ma mailed to them every single month. And this way they can consolidate, right? And not have to have that Correct. The mail out for like 300 different things a month. I mean, it's gonna be a big savings just in that unit group alone. Yeah. And but our, our customer 6, service and billing manager has been in touch with them already about consolidating those bills even in advance. But we're not milling these bills. What, what was the savings switching to the, because um, when I compared 2021 to 2022, we actually increased this by 6,000. So shouldn't this have gone down if we did it, sent it to a third party? 
Not yet. We haven't done it yet, have we? Are you talking about actually bill mailing? Well, the mailing of the bills, the carrier, all that. So we haven't actually started doing the third party? Correct. Well, when does um, that start? Do you mean by third party? Do you mean our our online e billing mm -hmm. and bill pay that that we're currently in the process of implementing right now? No, I thought Mr. Peters didn't. We discussed cathedral. switching over to cathedral. We did a couple of years ago switch to cathedral to do our our printing and mailing. Right. So since we've switched to cathedral, how much has that reduced the mailing? Hmm. That Over switch happened before I got the here. Postage. The postage isn't going to be reduced. Yeah. The, the printing and everything, and the, and the way it was done. You're right, Commissioner. It was the way we set it up was savings, but the mail is still the same. Mm -hmm. The postage cost. Right. The postage should come down this year once we get the e-billing up and running, and we're not actually physically mailing them, or cathedrals not mailing them. Yeah, we got to kill that paper. Mm -hmm. That's a good way to I start the recycling. No wait. more paper. Mm -hmm. Reduce, reuse. Recycle. Mm -hmm. Reduce. Reduce. Let's just do away with the water bill. I like my job. And the credit card processing fees, with us switch, do we have any help on that? That's like an additional $50,000, or is that going to continue to go up as we have more... That's going to go up, isn't it? Probably. But, I mean, with the new company, we're supposed to be getting a better rate. So I'm hoping it's going to stay steady where it's at. But it's the same is better than none. But, but I also think that when you make it easier for people to have it drawn off their bank account, that they just have it to be able to do that all online, it's just going to make it so much easier like to be able to do that. And that's one of the reasons that we decided to eat the processing fee. We're not passing that fee on to the customers. We we want to encourage them to go uh, pay their bills online. No, that's what I'm, instead of paying online with a credit card, I'll just have a, a, a bank withdrawal, you know what I mean? And I think more people, when you have that easy option mm -hmm. to just be able to do it online is going to be better. And you'll, you'll end up saving in the long run. Isn't it illegal Mayor, to charge I've, processing fees? No. It's illegal in the state of Florida to charge credit card processing fees through to the owner. Yeah, I took a class on it recently. You can charge it. You can charge the opposite. You can charge more to start with, and charge a convenience fee if they pay cash or in another manner. Um, there, there are ways around that. But I do want to point out that um, while we're very excited to have the e-billing, um, I think it's important to realize that. Uh, not as high as a percentage of people take advantage of it as you would think. Uh, Dave, if I remember correctly, 20% would be a good u utilization of e-billing. Is that correct? Well, uh, again, this is core, so they're going to to hype it to some extent, but they they were expecting us to be over 40 to 50% before wow. very long. But again, that's demographically driven. Yep. Okay, any other questions? No, then we'll move on to um, water and wastewater field operations, tab 27. Let's see what we have here. You just want us just to ask? Yes, ma'am, go ahead. What's the asbestos testing? I was just looking at that. A lot of our pipe in the ground is asbestos concrete pipe. And so because we have to cut it occasionally, we, we have to get into asbestos testing. Is that accurate? Yes. <laughs> I'm trying not to look concerned. Okay. We have ways of, of cutting the pipe that doesn't that isn't friable, it doesn't, it doesn't air, not aerosolize, but it doesn't get particles into the air. Basically, we cut it wet with the scissors rather than with a reciprocating saw. And then the locate prior to digging, that costs us $9,000? They don't, the, I thought that that locate program was free. We, 
We have to pay our own. Yeah. 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 Like we, lane locator. Hey, so, Sunshine so because we're a municipality, we have to pay for our lane locating. Sunshine. We're part of the Sunshine uh, A11 program, and so we to get the notifications that that somebody wants to put some utility in the in the ground, and we have to go out and locate it. And that's that's just part of our fee of being involved in the system. Okay, so that's us doing the line locating. Right. We not have, uh, not when we need line locating. Okay, now I get it. Both. All right, because I'm actually, like that's free both. service, right? But you guys are actually that's us. Mm -hmm. What we pay, the city pays for individuals. Like if I called line locators, you guys would be coming out locating lines. Correct. So that's your fee that residents don't get charged. I don't think they charge residents for that fee. Mm. No. Yeah, yeah, no. No. Yeah, so you guys do that for us. Well, thank you. Hey, any other questions, commissioners, on this one? No other ones? We'll move to tab 28, which is the wastewater treatment plant. The Eastern. <laughs> Questions on that? Nope. Nope. Okay, we'll move on to the next one, which is the rib site, tab 29. How are we doing with this guy? It's construction. In other words, nothing's going as smoothly <coughs> as you would hope, but things are moving forward. Okay. Any questions on the rip site? Okay, mm -hmm, good. Tab 30, lift stations. How are Madam Mayor, things? I'm yes. sorry, don't hate me. I won't. I need to go back to the rib site and the, the problems there. Do we have the solution yet, but just not the implementation? The contractor submitted a new dewatering plan uh, on Friday. Uh -huh. um, it's an extraordinarily robust dewatering program. Yep. Um, and so it's under review by the, by the engineer of record now. Uh, so they're expecting delivery of the materials on July 5th. And hmm. so we should be able to know within a week or so whether or not the, uh, the plan is going to work and we can leap ahead. How much over budget is it? None yet. None? Okay. No, no change order requests yet. Okay. Thank you. You are welcome. Lift stations, tab 30. Any questions? On this, That's an excitement on this sexy topic? <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully we won't have to, I mean, we have to use them, but hopefully we won't have any issues down the road. We get a lot of rain. Lightning's the killer. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> any questions on that? Then we'll move to our, our last and final tab, tab 31, capital funds don't clap yet. <laughs> no jinxing. I'll hold my applause. Please, hold your applause. Feel free to cheer loudly when it's done. Okay, any questions? I just okay, have then. one question. On, on our fuel expense, do, is there something that the public works people where we have our own pump where we fuel our own vehicles? There are two uh, tanks that we operate, or rather two locations that we have um, at the Public Works facility on Howland, <coughs> and then also Fire Station 62 or 61? 65. Oh, 65. Okay. And, and generally, um, we operate those outside of the hurricane season. Uh, during hurricane season, we fill them up right before, right before hurricane season. <clears throat> and then 
basically they're cut off from, from most use uh, so that they're there when, when they're needed in an emergency. Okay, but like on a day-to-day -day basis, where do, where do you fill your vehicles from? Most of, we're part of the WEX program, which most gas station, especially the chains, uh, participate in. So we, we just purchase our, our vehicle gas at the pump. At the regular pumps. Mm -hmm. Commissioner, um, one of the reasons we do that is, um, I refer to it as using other people's gas, especially during uh, weather events like hurricanes. Um, when you're in the middle of a hurricane recovery, you're not always sure when the gas is gonna get to you. So what we do is we use the WEX system for as long as we can, keep ours in reserve so that if there is a gas shortage um, because of delivery issue, we can then switch over to ours and still be able to uh, run our operation while we're waiting for the gas to come. Look, let's say at the end of hurricane season and we haven't used any, do we use what we have stored for our current vehicle fleet? Yes. What do you do? We that? switch back over and try and draw it down so we get fresh gas back in there. Fresh for the next time. All right. Commissioner McCool. Mr. Peters, do we want to talk about um, the lakeshore improvement yet? Do what? Lakeshore Lake improvement. If you want. And we see we have 120 budgeted for that. Yes, ma'am. Okay. How that is to start the design process on the um, um, redoing the area. We made a commitment to the uh, the residents at the uh, the condos that uh, we would look to repurpose the site at that time. We knew there was a very high likelihood that the arts and craft building would not be usable. Mm -hmm. um, we subsequently have uh, determined that the uh, community building is um, in a similar state. So the 120 will start the process of um, you know, doing some uh, neighborhood meetings, uh, all that, to public scoping, mm -hmm. uh, to see what the uh, the flavor of the community is for that site. Uh, if you all remember, um, uh, Pat Northey came to you all as a member of the ECHO uh, board and made a very strong appeal to you all that we quit doing the four or $500,000 projects and do a substantial project in one of the locations that we talked about doing a substantial project is at the Lakeshore property. It's a very valuable piece of property um, the only property that I think we have that's on the St. John's River, so. Okay. Okay. Thank any you. other, any other questions? Commissioner King, you good? Good. Okay. Thumbs up. Anyone else? Okay. Then we're gonna roll this baby closed. And now. Not yet. Not yet. After the millage, we can give a small round of applause. Um, Mr. Peters, does staff have to stay or can they go for the end of this? Pardon me? I mean, we're going to talk about the millage now yes, and have a consensus. Yes, ma'am. Absolutely. Okay. Um, as I indicated before, let me get my charts in front of me. I'm still confused about the parade, but we'll talk about that later. Um... As I said, we have uh, four different millage rates. <coughs> in the notebook that we gave you for the three workshops, um, in the front section uh, under tab one, the first one is uh, 7.25. Um, well, Mr. Peters, before we go that route, can we go ahead and go in numerical order because 7.25 is right in the middle of everything? Are you okay with either go from the, the top down or the bottom up? I would prefer right, that we I will, start. I will go from the um, roll back up. Okay. Um, okay. The roll back is 6.8957, I believe. Mm -hmm. um, and if you will note on the bottom of the page, 
where we show the fund balances and the estimated beginning fund balance was 15820000 million. Um, if we would go to roll back the coming year, it would immediately drop to $12 million. Four. It keeps dropping to the point that in the fifth year, we would be $1.29 million in the hole um, by going to roll back the coming year and maintaining that rate for the five-year period. Um, I think it's in, in technically that rollback every year because we're not showing any increase in revenue. But it's not. But it's not. It's not roll back every year. Pardon me. That's not correct. It's not roll back every year. Yeah, you no. keep rolling back. But well, roll back. If if you're looking at roll back at six point eight nine five seven, then you're you're calculating there. But the next year, your roll back's not going to be the same because you're still going to bring in more money. Even next year, you'll still bring in more money than what you're talking about. Right. But in this particular example, we're keeping the revenue the same all the way across. You're keeping the revenue the same, but that's not the roll back rate. I, I understand. Just to be clear. I understand. Uh, but anyway, at that rate, we would be one point two nine million. Uh, in the deficit by the fifth year. But do we know what the actual revenue is going to be? We won't know that until Friday. So we right will not now, know what the actual revenue number is until Friday. Um, and as I indicated earlier, uh, we would adjust according to that number, um, including our recommendation. All right, the next one is um, 7.25. So I believe it's the first chart. Yep. In that particular example, we started 15.8 million and we go down to uh, 6.13 million by the fifth year. Um, mind you, um, as we were talking about before, if we were to start paying on the uh, uh, the debt on the uh, fire pension at you know, 550000 a year starting not the coming year but the following year. That would be four years of uh, that, which would be $2.2 .2 million. So that $6.1 million would immediately drop to $3.9 million. Um, that's predicated on doing the um, um, uh, rental ordinance uh, in this number. So. Uh, it's getting very precariously close, and as I said before, if we have a recession, um, we'll be even more shaped. What, what did we actually project in 20, when, when we did our last budget, um, what did we actually project our income versus what we actually did, our revenue? Was there like $924,218 difference in extra revenue brought in? versus what we projected? Um, so are you talking for 2021 or 2022, the year we're currently in? Um, I believe it was 2022 to 2020, you know, when we did our projections mm -hmm. from the previous year, when we did our budget and we went through this whole process, and then when we got our actuals in, mm -hmm. wasn't there like $924,000 difference in revenue oh to the positive God. that we yeah. had taken? I think revenues do come in higher. It came in like $924,000 higher. I can't really remember off the top of my head, um, but we do track all of our the sources. My computer is the battery quick. I think that's what so, I wrote down here, so. Um, I mean, I can look that up. I just. Are you talking about 2021 to 2022? Yeah. No, when we when we did our projections like we're doing last now last year, we were given in our book a projection like we are right now. Right, and I so believe when our actuals came out, it was nine hundred and twenty-four thousand dollars more that we actually received versus the projected amount. So that okay, this is for oops. Um, Add blue. Oh no. That's okay, okay Mary. That's we'll just keep moving. Let me just come back. Whether whether your your projections might be, we might bring in more than what's projected. 
but it shouldn't be more more than about a million. Yeah, it's really close. It's really close. So I guess, I guess my point to that is trying to do something. I mean, we're so close to having the July 1st date of what it's going to be. Um, I mean, do we have to make a decision today on what we want to make this versus let's just wait well, until July 1st and actually have a better accurate idea of what the numbers are going to be? <coughs> The, the, the issue is that they they will have to work on a projected budget depending on what this commission decides that they are looking at. And if we're looking at rollback, um, that is, because again, I'm gonna say this, your, your budget projection right now, when you look at all of this, this budget is based on drawing down your reserves. This whole spreadsheet is based on drawing down your reserves. It's not based on cutting your budget. So this is st this is based on drawing the reserves. So if instead of drawing the reserves, for example, if you look at um, if you look at what you have to cut out of your budget instead of drawing down your reserves, you're looking at cutting during for rollback. You are looking at cutting out. $2.5 million out of this budget. If you don't want to take $2.5 million out of reserves, you have to cut $2.5 million out of the budget. And in the six or seven or eight hours we've been here, we have washed out. Okay? We've washed out. We haven't eliminated anything substantial and we've actually put in. So it's been a basic wash. So the, what the commission needs to decide is at least what I, I can tell you right now, I will not support the high millage rate. I will not support staying with the current millage rate at all. That's not, that's not a possible function. So, I mean, we have to look at what we're really going to do. And if you, if you want to go to an item like rollback and take 2.5 million out, um, you either draw it from the reserves and decide what you're going to do next year or you cut, cut numbers. And the only way to cut numbers, as this episode today has proven, is not to cut out of here. So you have to cut your recurring costs, which means you cut positions. And for my calculations, in order to save the $2.5 million, because million, I did all this and sat down for every one of these for hours, you'll have to cut 39 full-time employees to save $2.5 million of what you're gonna be short in in terms of going to rollback, and that's just this year. And if you choose to go to rollback next year because these projections are inaccurate in stating rollback, it'll be less. Um, that That's what you're looking at. So the commission, because I won't support a budget where we draw down the reserves. Today's, today's discussion showed you how much we're in the hole for the pension fund alone that we're gonna have to cough up some money every single year, whether it's 100,000 or 500,000, to make that, that pension fund a little more viable. So the, the question that's before you, and I, Commissioner Bradford, I understand you wanna wait for the actual numbers, and if we wanna wait until they come in Friday and get an email, and then have a brief discussion Tuesday, because Monday's the fourth, we have a commission meeting Tuesday, we can do that. Um, but I also think that it has to be something that's rolling around in everyone's head up until that point, whatever the commission decides. And I'm fine with whatever everybody decides. So whether we want to give guidance for a millage rate now or whether we want to wait till Friday, that's this commission's decision, but they need something soon. Well, okay. Madam Mayor, also well, be aware that when we get the information on Friday, we will not have time to get the information out to you before Tuesday. So it will have to be from the desk um, item. The reason I was recommending 110% of rollback is, as I said before, our main task right now is to set the maximum millage for trim notice at the end of July. Um, I don't believe in my heart of hearts that there is consensus to try to go more than 110% of rollback, whatever that number is. 
And so, you know, my thought was if we say 110% of rollback, that allows us to put a budget together for the maximum um, millage rate, and we can set a trim notice on that, and then we can continue to have budget meeting and start trying to trim the budget. Uh, but the mayor is correct that um, if you were to um, go to rollback, uh, assuming that we have like 72,000 for a typical employee, um, obviously some of them don't make that much. Um, you're looking at the 30, at the um, 39 position, but if you don't do the rental ordinance on top of that, then you're looking at 54, I believe it is, 59 position. Um, if we went to 7.25 roughly, um, you're looking at cutting a minimum of 26 position. Without the rental ordinance, you're looking at 46 positions. Um, with 110% of, uh, of rollback, you're not looking at cutting position because you'd be able to maintain a fairly level uh, fund balance each year. Um, so that's why we were making the recommendation. That's a 7.58, Mr. Peters. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. 7.58, I apologize. So, I mean, whatever the commission feels they want to do right now, I mean, we can't vote on anything. We can't make a decision. I mean, there's one, two, three, four, five of us here. So there's no, no voting this evening, but some direction, or if the direction is to wait until the numbers come in Friday and present this to us next week, um, that that's the direction as well so I mean right now we're assuming we have to drop 26 positions if we drop to 7.25 when in reality the hard housing market in Deltona is the strongest it's been in decade two and do we anticipate that number coming in way above what it was last year yeah we do um, I mean I personally think we could go back to 7.25. I think when the numbers come in from this year's tax roll, I think it's going to be quite a but shock to everybody. It Madam Commissioner, here's the thing. If the revenue comes in even higher, that means the rollback will be even less. Well, yes. Yep. The number can be even less than 110 percent. It's not even going to be 7.58. Mm -hmm. The only thing that would help us at this point would be if the revenue didn't come in as strong and the rollback isn't as low. And then uh, that would make it easier for us uh, to go something less than 110 percent. But if the revenue come in really strong, like you're suggesting, then the rollback is going to be even less than 6.95 or whatever it is. It might be 6.9 or 6.85. Um, and then 110 percent of that is going to be in the 7.4 range. Uh, so um, it, could, it could actually get worse if, in fact, the revenue came. Uh, much higher. Oh, because all the projections so far in Deltona have showed that the property values have greatly increased. So what you're seeing is true, then what we're doing right now is just a waste of time until we find out what the actual numbers are. Yes, ma'am, but you need to remember that uh, the way the state of Florida is with the Homestead Law, um, the commercial prop, when you see a large increase in revenue, it's typically in the city with large commercial bases because commercial, I believe, can grow 10 percent. Um, and so consequently, um, you know, those would be the cities, as you see, with the really large increase. Cities like Deltona with a higher residential component, um, not as likely to see that big of a change because of the sheer number of home debted properties. I mean, we'll see. I mean, we've had a lot of new homes built, and those new homes have been selling and increasing the value of the existing homes. I mean, I've seen them in even my own neighboring community, the houses that were substantially less than they are right now because a new home's being built for 400 so these $250,000 homes, guess what? Same size, bigger lots, they just went up. But remember, rollback is the tax rate that results in the same revenue as the previous year, irrespective of the growth. So if you have a huge amount of growth, then the rollback will be even lower no. uh, because it's based on replicating last year's revenue. What was our revenue last year from, from taxes? Um, ad valorem and Ad valorem only. 
Okay, in 2021, the actual was 22,136,623. Okay, which 20 was, um, I think, 296,000 higher than projected. Okay, so 22 million what? 22,136,623. And was how much really higher than projected, Mary? Um, 200, I wrote down two numbers, I can't remember which is from which year between, because um, we got pretty much got our revenue for 2022, I can give you that. So it was 296,000 more, and then for 2022, um, we budgeted 24,923,000, and the actual was 25,219,000. So over 10%, right? I didn't do the percent. Projections were 10% higher than, than pro projections, our total was 10% higher than projections. That's what I'm saying. <clears throat> so that disparity is gonna be larger here. I mean, but that's, th it's just a difference of $300,000. Mm -hmm. $300,000 is, that that's not even what we're talking about putting in the fire pension. I mean, that's all you're looking at is $300,000 difference in what you're bringing in. From from last, yeah, this was, the, the last one was 296,000. Yeah, that was for 2022. 2022, and the other one, let me see what you gave me here. No, how much did you say difference? You're, you're really hard to hear, Mary. Okay. I don't know if it's because the mic's. What was last year's, oh, what what did we do last year? It was really hard to hear. Okay, 21st, um, 2021, the actual was 22,136,623. Mm-hmm. And then 2023. what did you budget? We budgeted twenty one million seven hundred and forty thousand. And what was last year? Twenty twenty two. Our actual was twenty five million two hundred and nineteen thousand and six dollars. And budget was twenty four million nine hundred twenty three thousand. So you're looking the first year you were off. It came in 396,000 higher, and the next year it came up in 296,000 higher, 100,000 less right. than what was thing. But but the whole thing is this year. This year, our ad valorem brought in how much? 24,923. Right. Um, 20, for 2022, our actual was 25 million. Oh. 219,000. Okay, 25 million 219,000. That's yeah. what we brought in. So the budget for next year, if you go to rollback, you adjust your numbers to bring in $25,219. That's what you adjust your budget with. So what you're doing is you, it doesn't matter what you grew. It matters in, Minor. What a dog. Uh. <laughs> I was going to say, that wasn't nice. No, look, how cute. He's popped in a few times. I know, it's the first time I've seen him, sorry. Um, so basically, if we pulled in $25,219,000 this year, <laughs> next year, we have to have the same budget for 20, because rollback is bringing in $25,219. It doesn't matter what you grew. It doesn't matter what your property values are. You adjust your multiplier for rollback to bring in the same $25,219. Million. $25 million. I'm sorry, it's late. $25,219,000. So your revenue is gonna stay the same. It doesn't matter if you had growth, like 10% growth, 20% growth, it doesn't matter because your multiplier rollback is bringing in the same 25219000 next year that we brought in this year. So what we have to look at is what did we do in this budget for 25219000 What did we use that money for? And when you look at that, that amount of money, what's that gonna buy us next year? Because right next year, you're going to have a 3% increase in no matter what, whether it's salaries, whether it's health insurance, gasoline, whatever. So, which that means you have to reduce your expenditures next year because you're not having an increase. And the only way to reduce your expenditures to, to, to absorb this is to cut reoccurring revenue expenditures, which are employees. You don't have a choice. If you were to bring in 25 million this year and 25 million next year, 
and costs go up next year, how do you absorb the increase in costs? How do you absorb disaster? How do you absorb anything? You have to reduce your budget and you have to cut employees. Right. There's no way out. There's no, you have to cut services. You can only, you can cut capital once, but then understand when you do this next year and you wanna go raise your millage rate and your stuff still appreciates, you can only go up a tiny bit mm -hmm. without having a full majority vote. It's all the multipliers and what the state allows you to do, to go up. Am I wrong? No. You're That's correct. exactly what it is. We can't just go to side tomorrow to go back to eight mills if we go down to 6.9. We can't do it. It's not allowed. You can't. You can only go up the increment that you are allowed to do. And, and, and at some point, it's a full majority that you need. You need a 7-0 vote, which you'll never get unless we're almost bankrupt. So with that lecture, commissioners, what do you want to do? Do you want to wait until the numbers come in to have a better projection um, and have us talk about that next week? Or do we want to do like... So besides ad valorem taxes, how many other revenue streams does the city have and what's their calculated growth? between now and next year and the year after? Um, Be because ad is not the only revenue generated. That's correct. Mm -hmm. And we usually get our revenue projections from the state in mid-July. So it's sales tax, um, local option gas tax, community. Um, franchise fees, mm -hmm. electric, communication. Help me out, what else? Oh, yeah, state revenue sharing, which mm -hmm. is sales tax, and then also the 5%, I mean, you know, the half half a percent. Um, and you, can, you should be able to project out at some of those. We do. With regular, with pr pretty much certainty, like your sales tax and right. so forth. Right, once we get our revenue projections from the state, and this is why it's important that we get a millage rate so we can start preparing the budget. When we get the revenue projections in, we can balance the budget. So it just puts a lot of pressure on Karen <laughs> to try to put this enormous book together. The longer you wait, it puts us further behind the eight ball. So. And how much money do you plan to generate through fees and taxes here in the city, uh, you know, through permitting? And then, like we, yeah. we discussed, the Parks and Recs did the summer camp. With my numbers, that should have generated almost a million dollars. And if you only have a $75,000 expense, I mean, was that put into this pot of money as well? Um, which fees are you referring to? Well, the, the summer camp that we're doing this year. If we had 90 uh, kids at, yeah. uh, you know, 90 bucks a pop a week right. times 12 weeks, that was almost $890,000. Well, if you want to take a look at this, I mean, I, that money, it's important. But in the big scheme of things, if you look at the second line, on, we have ad valorem. And then underneath that is non-ad valorem, which is estimated to be $27 million. So, and that's, that's a summation of all the other revenues we just talked about. Um, but does that include, does that $27 million include all the fees that are collected within the city as well? It, it includes general fund. All the general fund. Right. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Are we going to have a meeting soon on the fire? Weren't we talking about doing a um, fire assessment? No, we have to do a whole study on that first. That's not when, would, when was that going to be looking at next year? I think they um, went out for RFP and they selected a consultant that will do the study. And I believe that will be happening in this fiscal year. Uh, yes. The um, consultant contract will be coming to the commission <coughs> for your approval probably on July 18th. Um, it's GFG, at the firm that we selected out of two, and uh, we got to negotiate uh, the fee structure and everything with them. We'll come to you on the uh, 18th of July, and we will get them started. Um, but you know, the fire fee, uh, what we envision, that can only cover those things related to fire. It doesn't include transport. Uh, so um, we anticipate that you know, it will allow us to reduce the Avalon a comparable amount to whatever the fee brings in. Um, so that's the expectation there. And that's that's for 23-24? That would be 23-24. Um, I, I keep having to remember the year because we have to have this in place by February. 
Um, the resolution you all did for the fire fee, the resolution was actually the one you were supposed to do in February. Um, and that one, you would set uh, the process in place, set a fee, and then the notification would go out to the uh, resident, and it would go into effect uh, starting in October of 23. <coughs> and, and just to, just to, do a quick calculation, just to do a quick calculation, general fund revenue is what we're talking about setting the, the millage rate right now for, right? Yes. Um, and that is your last year's revenue in general fund revenue, just taxpayer money, test taxes, was you had, Mary, how much was our, our 24, 923? Is that correct on one of our sheets here? 25219. Um, sorry. You want to have to? I have to ever log in again. That's okay. Just around 25 million, right? Correct. 25 million. Okay. So just doing a calculation of last year's uh, public safety. Okay. Public safety last year, not the not this budget. Last year's budget was twenty six million four hundred forty three thousand two hundred ninety dollars. So basically, your public safety budget, and that does not include anything that we would talk talking about now if we were adding extra money in from the pension mm -hmm. fund, is you are almost at the twenty seven million of the non ad valorem revenues that you're bringing in. So your public safety budget at $26,443,000 is higher than what you put, pulled in in property tax revenues. That's just police and fire. That's yes. not any Correct. other. Typically, ad valorem, I mean, law enforcement, public safety is generally 110% of And that's about what valorem. this is. So we don't even cover... No, but that, that's my point. And when you right. talk about having a general fund revenue and you talk about having all the other revenues the city brings in mm -hmm. from sales tax and communications taxes and all the other stuff that we get in our, our, our share of X, Y, Z, mm -hmm. neither one, neither one covers our law enforcement budget as, as a whole and, and right. public safety. And again, that's not even talking about our debt service that we should be additionally paying on the pension fund to make that more solvent. Right. So the only 7.582 is the only millage that would cover just public safety. Right. The other ones would come in short. But then you, you, still, have, you still have every other department that you have to budget for and pay for. You still have to pay for all the other expenses. The city would have to contract if we went to rollback because the other expenditures continue to grow also in the demand on city staff. Well, if you look at the metrics continue. Like I said, it's public safety, nobody wants to cut. It's not going to cut. It is what it is, and you're, you're going to have to increase it as, as, as that goes on. There's no way out. Right. And projecting with a contract, you don't know what that contract is going to be. So you're right. already looking at, even if you take your straight up other revenue and say that's pu your public safety cost, all you have to work with is your ad valorem revenue. And if you want to contract that revenue or bring in the same amount, you have to account for the expenses going up. And in or, right. the only way to do that is to cut positions because, you, yes. like I said, six or eight hours of doing this today, we, we washed. We didn't cut anything significant to make a debt into cutting this budget at all mm -hmm. by, pick, by going line by line. And we had great input. Mm -hmm. And we had great comments and great questions and great answers. But what did, so I mean, it's just something to think about because I'm a numbers freak and do this in my sleep. <laughs> Madam Mayor, we just need to give the uh, city manager a general consensus, correct? I mean, we need something to operate off of. Would it be safe to say that, um, I mean, we've ruled out going low. We don't want to burden the taxpayer at high, <coughs> you know, so is there, 
Are you going to ask if there's any consensus for them? I, to I'm going to ask for consensus for 7.58, the highest one that we can go to reasonably. I will not support 7.85 or 8, whatever the heck it is. I would fully support 7.58. 7.58 to, to move forward and see what the projections come in. That's my, that's my, is that right? 7.58? Yes. Madam put my paper away. Yes. If I can suggest 110% um, of rollback, whatever that number ends up being. Because 7.58 is what is 110 percent of our projected yeah. rollback. Mm -hmm. So 110 of what it actually is, is it, but it's not going to reach 785. I don't think. God, no. Looking no. at the numbers, yeah. If it, if it no. does, we're in a recession. Yeah. Shh. Don't say turn around three if it, times if it comes and spin. In that bag, we're done. Then you might as well bank on those 12 million we put away. So 110 percent of rollback, 7.58, or I'm going to project a little bit less. I'm in agreement with that fully. Commissioner King, Commissioner you're King nodding. Nodding his head. I want to see the dog again before you go, sir. Can we see um, the dog, Commissioner? Commissioner Bradford or no? What would you like to do? So you don't want to do any consensus tonight? Commissioner Sosa? Here comes the dog. Okay, so there's three people that want to have the projection for 100 to spend. 110% of rollback, and two people that want to wait until the, oh my God, and want to wait until the numbers come in. I'm sorry, that dog is so cute. So there is consensus three to two to at least bring something preliminary with the 110% of rollback. And then we will see, as soon as you figure something like that out, please let us know the numbers as soon as you get them in. And at least what you get from the property appraiser, you should have something for us by our meeting on Tuesday, July 5th. We'll make an announcement at the meeting on Tuesday. Okay. And if anything comes in earlier and you get that gift, let us know sooner. And then also, um, if you can, yeah, if you can just project that, that would be good so we have better numbers. Okay? Okay. I mean, we can't vote on anything. All you can do is look at it. Okay. Um, members of the public. Anybody want to come up and speak for the public? You had two people, Liz? Yes, ma'am. Uh, Brandy White and then Terry Dorito. Do 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 Brandy White, uh, candidate for District 1. I obviously have way more questions I can get done in two minutes, but I want to really hit home on the legal department with the confusion. I also had some confusion. Because if we're looking at it as a whole, I don't know when we started splitting the legal cost. I went back and looked at the budget from 2019, 2020. It was all under one category. We didn't split it. So you really need to look at this as a whole. So I went through that budget and I added up every legal cost and expense and it was over $1 million in budgeted legal expenses. So my question is, why is that really not being addressed as a whole and it's being split. It says here, like I understand I heard about the labor attorney, all that, but it says here um, in uh, the budget what his objectives and stuff are, and it's all legal. It shows labor he's responsible for, water depart department he's responsible for. He's responsible for all these things that you're subbing out in all these other categories. So reality is his firm's getting over a million dollars or we're subbing out some of this work and expense and not cutting what we're paying him. So I'm, I'm really confused and this needs like a real deep dive. I also wanted to know if we have a true up on where we are with their firm this year because I heard we're also going to ask for even more. Um, and do we get a closing statement at the end of each uh, budget cycle as to where this money went, what we were charged for each uh, lawsuit or project? Um, most attorneys have to, uh, do, to, to do that. They have to provide one of those. Um, what about doing that quarterly? Do we get quarterly updates as to where we are? I, I have went and looked back. I'm not finding anything really that tells us where we're at, what we're being charged. And the hourly thing was surprising because it was contracted, like it was a set number at some point. So I don't know if the contract has changed, if that can be answered. Um, but obviously, like the rest, it, you know, there's not enough time. So thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Tara Diorico, please. Hey, good evening, Tara Dierko. I'll be quick because I know it was long. Y'all want to get out of here. 
Um, so we are coming up on hard economic times. I think everybody knows that. And already stretched household budgets are going to start snapping. Um, and actually there was a report that came out today that indicated Central Florida families are already paying an average of $341 more a month just for their normal everyday operating expenses. So, you know, while I understand taxes and fees are, are necessary for the services we need and we, we get provided, the time for fiscal responsibility has never been more important. And the community has probably never looked to you all more to be good stewards of our money. Um, so if there's going to be any consideration to take more money out of our pockets, and so forth, doesn't sound like I'm hearing that, which is awesome, but if there is, then what I would just say is um, we're going to ask that some sacrifices be made on the city's part as well, right? If families have to sacrifice and alter their household budgets and tar tighten our belts, we'd ask, we'd ask our city members to do the same. Um, and although it's, it's very easy to, you know, not really pay a lot of attention to $1,000 here, $5,000 here, and just flip through those on the line items. Um, at the end of the 187 pages, it all adds up. So please show the residents that you're looking at them as families struggling to make ends meet and not just an anonymous pot of money. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Yeah. Okay, thank you so much. Um, before we finish up, um, I just want to say thank you, commissioners. Thank you, Commissioner King, <coughs> all of you for staying here, and thank you very much, staff. Um, I just want to say that as long of a day as it was, I'm so glad we did it because I feel like, it, I know there was grumbling in the beginning of this budget cycle about doing a line by line, when were we gonna do it and all that, but I really feel like everything was transparent today. I think that we got more answers in what goes on with this budget than we ever have before in terms of explanations for, for the questions that we asked. There are other things you have to get back with us, and I understand that because the last thing that I would wanna see is anyone giving an answer under pressure that's not correct or that's off, and it puts a lot of pressure on you guys too to do that, so thank you. And um, excellent, excellent meeting, and um, I'm just, I'm really happy the way it went in terms of transparency, openness, and, and really, I think a lot of us learned a lot today about what we, what staff is really doing and what they're spending and, and what we have to really look at. So thank you again. We will see you Tuesday. Happy 4th of July, Tuesday, 6.30 commission meeting. And then we should have more numbers to make a better decision. Okay? Thank you, we are adjourned.